I'm Charlene Bowles Burton. Thank you for taking the time to join me as I facilitate the presentation on The Humanistic Approach of Malcolm Knowles, Theory of Angiogogy. Knowles was truly the founding father of angiogogy in the United States. Through his influence, American educators started to view adult learning in a different light. Knowles was the first to clearly theorize how adults learn and described about adult learning as the process of self-direct inquiry. As adults re-enter the educational arena for many different reasons, but with the experience we bring to the classroom, we want education to be an immediate impact on our lives. As we find ourselves faced with returning to the traditional classroom where learning was teacher direct, with the wealth of experience, adults want to be able to decide what we'll learn and how we'll learn it. Adults would be able to transfer what they learn and incorporate it into everyday use. A legal education means you will learn to speak in a new language. You will be taught to achieve insight into the world around you and to sharply question what you know. The seat you have picked will be yours for the next nine months of your life. And those of you in the front row, Beware. The law is reason free from passion. Does anyone know who spoke those immortal words? Yes. Aristotle. Are you sure? Yes. Would you be willing to stake your life on it? I think so. I think so. What about oh. his life? I don't know. Well, I recommend knowing before speaking. The law leaves much room for interpretation, but very little for self-doubt. And you were right. It was Aristotle. Now, I assume all of you have read pages 1 through 48 and are now well-versed in subject matter jurisdiction. Who can tell us about Gordon versus Steele? Let's Hello. call on someone from the heart, sir. Woods. Oh, <laughs> um, actually, um, I wasn't aware that we had an assignment. Oh. <laughs> Vivian Kensington, do you think it's acceptable that Ms. Woods is not prepared? No. I don't. Would you support my decision to ask her to leave class and to return only when she is prepared? Absolutely. Kensington, did diversity jurisdiction exist in this case? No, it did not. Good. 
Before we go any further, let's address the following question we would like to answer today. The difference between pedagogy and andragogy? How adults learn? The andragogy assumption and learning theory. Now let's explore the origin of andragogy. A German teacher, Alexander Kemp, originally formulated the word in 1833. A pioneer in adult education, Edward Lem Lemon, used the term in 1926. In 1950, it started showing up in literature. In 1968, Malcolm Knowles adopted the theory of andragogy. During the past decade, andragogy have increasingly been used in adult education. In France, England, Venezuela, and Canada, they have established the andragogy degree program at different colleges and universities. Andra, meaning man, pay means child, agogis meaning lead. In the mid-1960s, Malcolm Knowles first used the term to describe adult learning. Pedagogy, the art and science of teaching children. Andragogy relates to the art and science of helping adults learn. Knowles was the first to clearly theorize how adults learn and describe adult learning as a process of self-direct inquiry. As individuals mature, their need and capacity to be self-directed, to use their experiences in learning, to identify their own readiness to learn, and to organize their learning around life problems increases steadily from infants to pre-adolescence, and then increases rapidly during adolescence. Pedagogy assumptions are realistic. And if pedagogy is practiced appropriately, it should be used less as the child enter into the second year high school.